This conference will now be recorded. Hello. 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 Hi. Uh, he's going to start. Hello. Hello. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, it's going to start or still we are waiting for someone? It will be starting, just take a couple of minutes. Yeah, yeah. Hi. Uh, okay. Session is about to start, okay? Just give for you that. Sure. Hey guys, are you able to see my screen? Yep. Yes. So welcome to the demo guys, um, you know, today I'm going to walk you through uh, what data engineering is all about and, uh, you know, uh, what I'm going to cover as a part of this course, okay, and, uh, you know, maybe I'll be taking up your questions towards the end of the session, okay. So let me introduce myself, uh, you know, I'm Suresh and having 11 years of experience into data engineering. So right from the day one of my career, I have been working on, uh, you know, big data and data engineering technology started with Hadoop, where yeah. I have implemented, you know, traditional MapReduce and Hive. I mean, the reason for calling it as traditional MapReduce because the distributed computing in data have started with Hadoop. Okay. So then I moved into Spark and I then moved into Azure, which is cloud. 
okay and i have hands on with the gcp and aws as well okay so during this 11 years i have got chance to work with you know lot of industries uh, companies and uh, industries of different sectors dealt with digital marketing insurance banking asset management uh, you know to be precise right and have got a training experience of uh, more than 6 years guys and i have been training folks on python and data engineering so far and yeah this is for data engineering okay so before we actually get into uh, what data engineering is all about any idea what exactly data is uh, let's try to make this session as interactive as possible any idea what exactly data engineering is yes no maybe uh as per my understanding uh, it is extracting data from various sources and uh, organizing them in such a way that uh, they automatically get stored into the databases like the tables we create in the database mm -hmm. which can be further used for uh, data analysis and uh, we don't even need to data. go there uh, i am i'm just trying to understand the definition of data just data data is nothing but information then what is information <clears throat> okay let me explain so uh, i mean in day to day life we use data and information in the wrong context unfortunately uh, technically data is a collection of raw facts okay so that's a bookish definition though so what is uh, raw facts you know collection of you no know, what exactly are these raw facts basically i would say to keep in a keep it in a very layman terminology data is nothing but collection of some attributes as simple as that say for example you talk about student data student id student name student location or uh, you know the branch in which a student is studying all these details would uh, give you student data as a whole okay and then maybe you want to talk about product data product id product name product price product category all those things will uh, give you product data okay so collection of these attributes is what we can call as data data is nothing but some text and numbers to put it in a very layman terminology data is nothing but some text and numbers okay now talking about information useful data is what we call as information useful data is what we call as an information maybe i was given students marks data okay just by looking at that data i'll not be able to interpret anything but if somebody says the average percentage of uh, this class is 74 meaning if i pick any student in random his percentage would be in and around 74 it will be close to 74 okay or the average percentage of uh, that particular class is 74 meaning most of the students in that class have scored a percentage in uh, in and around 74 okay so this is what we call as useful data this is what we this is what is information which is something useful okay now you know uh, there are few other uh, terms as well guys because let's say when we learn all these technologies we will be called as data engineer okay and uh, there are couple of other guys too one is data scientist and the second one is a data analyst any idea what a data scientist does and uh, what a data analyst does any idea what a data scientist does and what a data analyst does um may i sorry yeah okay uh, uh 
data analyst uh, does prepare uh, visualizations from the already prepared data and uh, data scientists create predictive models uh, so that new questions can be created and uh, possible predictions can be made okay that is correct okay but uh, you know let me explain let me detail it and explain okay so these two are our customers firstly these two are our customers okay now i'll i'll take an example and i'm going to talk about uh, this thing let's say right now amazon freedom sale is going on okay so it's be it freedom sale or great indian sale whatever it is right now they want to give some offers okay so i'm i'm not considering bank offers over here because bank offers is driven by bank okay but when you talk about the actual offers on the products so will amazon give these offers randomly do you see offers on every product guys during this sale i i want to buy benq 4k projector from quite some time now so every sale i open that product and see if the price got decreased and i have never seen a one ru single rupee decrease in uh, benq 4k projectors in india so not every product will uh, have offers right so even during the sale so what happens during the sale like how do they uh, offer those discounts so basically it all depends on this data scientist so this data scientist would come up with uh, you know a set of products on which uh, say i mean the discount should be given and how much discount should be given so that you know the buyer and seller would be happy okay or uh, to create a win win situation right and then maybe uh, there are multiple scenarios right let's say iphone 17 or iphone 18 will be released in future or it's releasing now and maybe iphone 12 and 13 are piled up the stock is piled up maybe he want to clear the existing warehouse and to accommodate the new products okay so that's when how much discount should be given on uh, the piled up product so that you know the stock would be cleared okay so all this kind of analysis will be done by this data scientist all this analysis would be done by the data scientist okay and uh, for him to do this analysis he needs data okay now you know where the data is lying data is lying at different sources maybe you know data could be there in the databases their data warehouses right and then uh, probably some data is uh, being generated in real time say for example you are a customer and the moment you open uh, amazon website and uh, you keep on clicking on various products Okay, for every click you are making, it is generating some data in the back end. We call that data as click stream data. Click stream data. Click stream data is very useful, guys, even for lead generation. Okay, so for example, if you are viewing a product in Amazon, if you open some other website, you will see the same advertisement over there. How are you able to see it? Because of this click stream data. Google, base, uh, Google try to capture what are the products you are viewing okay and then display the advertisements related to that product in the other websites so this is an example of clickstream data for every click you are making you know they'll try to understand uh, you know what you are viewing you might have heard it in real time as well right maybe people will always suggest you to check flight prices in incognito mode okay because you are frequently searching for a particular flight, there is a chance that price might increase. Okay, so this is all clickstream data. Basically, for every click you make, it generates data in the back end. Okay, so for a data scientist, in order to understand what products people are really interested in, he also needs to understand the search patterns of the users. Okay, so uh, here the data is clickstream data, which is real time streaming data. Okay and uh, uh, there are other sources of data too let's assume 
now data scientist by himself cannot go and get the data and prepare the data so that he can uh, readily run his ml algorithms okay now he would work with a data engineer to get this done he would work with a data engineer to get this done so basically i am a data scientist okay maybe i want to come up with discounts right maybe to come up uh, with discounts i have uh, created a sample data okay created a sample data and i have uh, uh, tested that sample data with xyz algorithms okay and now my algorithms are xyz which i want to run in order to come to a conclusion now what i would do is i'll uh, schedule a meeting with my data engineer i'll tell him boss this is the data i would need okay so now it's your job to go figure out where this data is lying and what transformations you want to do you want to do joins unions aggregates i don't care okay but at the end of the day this is how i want the data requirement to data engineer is given now it's responsibility of this data engineer to get all the data from the different sources what a data scientist need do all the wrangling massaging transformations they're all the same word they're all indicating the transformations okay and then uh, get the data ready for uh, data scientist to run his algorithms at a huge scale okay now you might ask me boss uh, where does this data analyst come into picture this data analyst would be creating beautiful reports because uh, have you ever seen uh, the leadership team consisting of technical folks leadership team consisting of technical folks when i say technical folks who can write a sql query or who can write a python code by themselves to understand a few things yes no maybe you can use your chat window guys if you are not comfortable unmuting yourself yes no maybe okay from my side answer is no okay at least 90% of the time because they usually come from b schools okay because they are the ones who drive business you know they'll be coming from iims or isbs most of the leadership team okay are, are from some business background they don't understand all these sequels and uh, data that is there in tables okay so they need beautiful visuals okay maybe i want to show them my sales trend or maybe i want to show them what products are doing good or maybe i want to show them how the expiry date and uh, transition delays are affecting uh, the manufacturing okay so that is where these data analysts would come into picture they create beautiful visuals depicting uh, you know uh, all these trends okay now you know this data analyst would also give us the requirement it's not just a data scientist every time data analyst maybe he want to create a sales report or maybe he wants to create the trends from past 5 years okay so he would need some data again he'll come to us he'll give his requirement what needs to be done how the data should look like so that he can directly create reports on top of it okay and uh, now it's our job we data engineers are the ones who would create all these things now let's say we have a cloud environment where we want to do all this analysis okay but the data need not be there on your environment yet maybe data could be there in a world tp no i don't want to use any technical jargons today maybe data could be there in your on premise databases on premise databases are nothing but the databases that are there and maintained on uh, in your organization okay so these databases or maybe data warehouses or maybe some files okay maybe the click stream data what i was referring to earlier okay or uh, you know uh, maybe we'll stick to these four sources for now 
okay we'll have to we'll have to bring this data to cloud first before i do any transformations right and that process is what we call as data ingestion that process is what we call as data ingestion okay so we do data ingestion uh, meaning we are bringing in all the data from different data sources to cloud okay and once we have the source data in cloud then we do all the transformations and then you know provide the data to the data scientist okay and uh, you know for doing all these operations right any cloud be it azure aws gcp what not they have their own set of services okay so in azure the data services are azure sql which is a database and then azure databricks this is where actually you can write PySpark code. Okay, meaning you can uh, write code to process your data in the distributed fashion. Okay, it helps you especially when you have some terabytes of data. Okay, and then uh, you have Azure Data Factory. And you have Azure Synapse Analytics. Azure Data Factory is usually used for data ingestion and uh, orchestration. And this Azure Synapse Analytics is your data warehouse on cloud, but it's distributed again. Okay. And then we have something called as Event Hub. Event Hub is a messaging queue. We use this especially when you're dealing with real time streaming data. And then we have something called as streaming analytics. Azure streaming analytics to deal with the data that is coming in from Event Hub. Okay. In a streaming fashion. Right. So uh, there are some tools, supporting tools, I would say. One is ADLS Gen 2, which is uh, used for storage. Okay. And then we have something called as Key Vault, Azure Key Vault, to store sensitive information because we don't want to display all the sensitive information, right, uh, on your code, hard coded. So we generally use this Azure Key Vault. And then we have something called as Log Analytics Workspace. This Log Analytics Workspace is where you can uh, track all the logs of the processes you are running. Okay, so this is the complete set of data services we have data services and helper services. Okay, so in our course, I'm we are going to deal with Azure's ADLS Gen 2, which is ADLS stands for Azure Data Lake Store. Okay, so one moment. Our course starts with ADLS Gen 2. Okay. Then I'm going to start Azure Databricks. And in Azure Databricks, I'm going to start with Spark SQL, where I'm going to teach you SQL. And then I'm going to teach you PySpark. Okay. And, uh, you know, all the Databricks concepts, like, you know, how to create a Databricks job, Databricks workflows, and then uh, Databricks transformation, sorry, Databricks widgets. Okay. And then what a unity catalog is, what a workspace is, Databricks workspace is, and how do you create volumes, all those things I'll be covering under Databricks. And then uh, Azure, we'll start with Azure uh, Synapse. Okay. So while we are doing these things, I'll be covering Azure Key Vault as well. Because we will be dealing with a lot of uh, sensitive data. Especially when you are reading data from ADLS Gen 2, we need to uh, give access tokens. Okay, so we deal with a lot of sensitive data, and uh, I'm going to teach you Key Vault as well. And then Azure Synapse, not Synapse, Azure Data Factory. We'll start with Azure Data Factory. And in Azure Data Factory, we'll talk about a lot of things what a integration runtime is, uh, what a linked service is, what a data set is. How do we create self-hosted integration runtime? And I'm going to show you how can you uh, ingest data from on-premise database to 
cloud uh, storage okay and also on premise file system to cloud storage and then how do we do all the transformations using data factory how do we stitch all the services together this is what we call as orchestration so for example you are doing ingestion using data factory and then transformations using pyspark in databricks and then finally you are using synapse analytics as a warehouse now how do you stitch these uh, services together and uh, create that end to end automated pipeline okay i'm going to show you all those things using uh, data factory when we are talking about data factory okay and then finally we'll talk about azure synapse azure synapse analytics okay so this azure synapse analytics i'm going to talk about how to use synapse as a warehouse but i'm going to show you how you can execute spark code as well because synapse provide you couple of engines guys one is sql engine and second one is spark engine okay we call them as pools though sql pool and then spark pool okay in sql pool again we have serverless and we have something called as dedicated sql pool and uh, then you have spark pool okay so sql pool and then spark pool so i'm going to talk about uh, all these things and how you can create your notebooks how you can create external tables how you can create uh, synapse tables okay so all these things will be covered so we actually start with very basics guys we'll try to understand what a cloud environment is we'll try to understand uh, you know different types of cloud services we have cloud deployment models we have like public cloud private cloud multi cloud hybrid cloud and then the cloud services platform as a service uh, infrastructure as a service software as a service serverless right all those things okay so i think uh, you will be shared with the detailed content where uh, i have listed down all the topics i'm going to discuss in this session or in this course and the course duration is going to be 2 months the start date and timings will be announced by kerryity very soon okay now any questions so far any questions are you going to cover advanced topics in data breaks or on this basics uh, now you tell me the your definition of advanced topics no. uh, like there are like uh, i have some basic knowledge on data breaks so or some medallion architecture or some blah blah stuff came recently so are you going to cover all those stuff or that will be covered medallion architecture will be covered medallion architecture will be covered in adls itself okay, okay. and then we will implement that medallion architecture when we are dealing with, dealing with uh, data breaks okay. okay so okay. for me advanced and basic is little different say so for example there are a couple of functions called collision and repartitioning okay mm -hmm. so if you have a basic knowledge whenever i ask you difference between collision and repartitioning you will say repartitioning is used either to increase or decrease partitions collision right. is only to decrease partitions but if you have advanced knowledge you will tell me what happens behind the scenes when do we have to go for collision when do we have to go for repartitioning mm -hmm. okay so why why repartitioning is expensive than collision how does reshuffling happens in the back end okay make sense yep okay and uh, say for example talking about optimization or maybe talking about skewness of the data understanding what happens internally is something which will be more important but like i was mentioning you know i'll be covering most of the topics okay and like delta like, lake and what are these things yes delta lake i'll cover delta apis also i'll cover how do you interact with delta lake using pyspark apis yeah got it okay okay yeah pyspark and databricks you know i'll be covering uh, very extensively guys because 90% of the data engineering interviews are driven by databricks and pyspark yeah that's correct and uh, assuming uh, people not having experience on sql i'll be spending a weeks time to make you understand sql as well okay which is spark sql 
so again uh, you know i'll be covering this databricks widgets databricks workflows uh different types of computes we have and uh, how how do we uh, create this uh, job compute right all those things will be covered unity catalog what is an external location right and then uh, how hive meta store and unity catalog are different all those things will be taken care of cool. okay yeah uh, any other for, questions guys yeah for understanding uh, spark sql and pyspark uh, mm -hmm. do we need to have any prerequisite knowledge on spark uh, and python or uh, we are good to go with this course i would always recommend you to have some knowledge on python that would certainly help for sure but yes. uh, that's not going to be a stopper i'll tell you what happens uh, guys, uh, there is a reason why I generally spend most of the time on QAs, Q and A's. I always want to set the expectations right so that you won't be disappointed. I won't be disappointed towards the end of the session because after putting in uh, two months of effort, if you come back to me and tell me, boss, uh, this is not something which I ex expected, I, I will definitely feel disappointed. So I'll be very fair in answering your questions. Please utilize this time. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, what was the question? Uh, so, I uh, Spark, Spark or PySpark, uh, I have never worked on it. Um, basically, oh, okay, I'm you're in... talking about basics, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. basically. So, SQL, SQL, yeah. SQL, I'll be explaining, you know, uh, what is needed. But uh, Python, I'll not be covering as a part of my course. But knowing Python is uh, good to have. But I'll tell you what happens if you don't know Python. Since I'm going to teach you SQL, you will be able to understand what a joint transformation is, what a union transformation is, what case when statement is doing or what if then statement is doing, right? Or uh, maybe what a rank function or dense rank function is doing, you'll be able to understand. Okay. Now, when I move to PySpark, you will understand what I'm doing, but you'll always have a doubt in your mind that, you know, will I be able to write this code? Because the syntax wise, it will be Python. You know the operation, but implementation will be in Python. Okay. So you know what is happening, but you, you always will be in a shell thinking that will I be able to do it? Okay. So if you want to get that confidence, you know, you should be knowing Python. Okay. okay. But okay. Uh, like I said, it won't stop you from uh, learning anything and now if we go to data factory we don't use python if we go to synapse analytics we don't use python data factory is all uh, drag and drop tool it's all configuration driven even though you have to do these joins unions or whatever the transformations i'm referring to right you'll be doing it on uh, drag and drop fashion okay so without python you will struggle for 10 days in our course or 10 sessions i would say out of uh, 50 50 quiz sessions again like i said when i say struggle it's not that you won't understand anything you will understand what's happening but with an element of doubt in your mind make sense okay got it thanks yeah Any other questions, guys? Okay. If you don't ask, I'm going to cover a couple more topics which I wanted to. And then uh, probably we'll close this. I am expecting another question on the environment. Okay. Boss, uh, now we will be creating an Azure account. So, how much does it cost? Okay. So, Azure offers you a free account which is valid for 30 days. If you have already used it, forget about it. Until and unless you have multiple credit cards. For one credit card, you can get up to 30 days. Okay. And uh, this will be around two hundred dollar worth two hundred dollar is too much two hundred dollar is too much we will not be using thirty forty dollar itself okay 
so uh, azure free account you can use for uh, 30 days and our course duration on paper will be two months but i'll be very practical it will take up to two and a half months not more than that for sure okay the reason being you know i'll not be doing a one-way talking you will have questions you'll ask questions i'll have to address your questions right and sometimes we will have dedicated doubts clarification sessions okay so though i'll have only 40 hours of content to teach but i would need those uh, 10 additional sessions okay so uh, on paper i though it is 40 hours it might take up to 50 hours up to i'm saying it's not mandatory let's say if you have less questions and if you are uh, if you are understanding everything in the first go itself you know we can complete it in two months okay and you might ask me boss after this 30 days uh, since our course will be for two and a half months what should i do for one and a half month okay for that one and a half month if you go for a premium version it would hardly cost you 1500 INR provided you are following all the steps given by me properly and carefully okay but with one two additional settings you are doing you might end up paying you might end up adding one more zero there towards the end okay if you are more crazy you might end up adding one more zero okay so you'll have to be very careful with the settings okay but uh, you know uh, i can show you my usage so i was taking two batches simultaneously one batch got completed last month okay so your batch will be started very soon but i just want to show you how much i have consumed for two batches you can keep monitoring this see i cannot create trial accounts every month right so what is this cost bill cost management and billing So this is my last build amount. Okay. So you can now get an understanding of how much you'll have to pay from your pocket. Okay. Even if you don't want to do that, there is an alternative. Okay. So we will spend good one month time on Databricks. Okay and uh, you have something called as databricks community edition you can use this so this databricks community edition will fulfill our requirement 70 percent okay but there are 30 percent uh, more like unity catalog and then uh, databricks jobs uh, databricks workflows and uh, using widgets these are the few things which are not supported by community edition okay for which you need a premium edition but you can still get 70 percent of your work done using this community edition okay let's say if you want to use community edition i would request you to uh wait in the first one month use community edition and then probably you can uh, create your licensed version but i would always recommend you to go with licensed version because 1500 may you're not getting anything not even in india okay but here you can learn a lot okay and uh, i'll give you another cheat as well uh, probably after we complete few sessions how you can actually use azure subscription for free of cost okay but again that might take some time uh, it will not happen during our course but uh, you can use azure subscription for free of cost if you are a microsoft certified trainer okay i'll tell you how you can do those things but not enough okay so any questions related to this uh hey uh so how many years of experience we need on this to get a job actually in market or uh, how how what's the uh job market for the freshers 
if uh, if we don't have any idea on this too when you say you are a fresher fresher in in this technology or uh, fresher uh, in your experience overall uh, yeah in experience on in experience too, yeah. i would say you know if you are a fresher completely you know uh, i don't know because the job market in india and us is different you are from us or india no uh, i'm in us actually you are in us then it will be driven by your consultant how your profile will be marketed okay but uh, in india if you are if if anybody of you are from india and you wanted to join as a data engineer start your career as a data engineer uh, it might not happen with uh, you know big consulting firms like tcs infosys right usually they recruit people and then recruit freshers and then uh, they put them into projects where there is a requirement okay but uh, these days the trend is changing there are a lot of startups that are blooming in india in hyderabad especially in fact i myself have worked for three startups in last few years okay so uh, we are actually recruiting freshers with data engineering knowledge so that we avoid training cost okay but uh, you know it might not happen with uh, big companies like infosys cognizant tcs okay now talking about us market us market it all boils down to how your consultant markets your profile okay so i don't think uh, profiles in us are marketed as fresher profiles got it thank okay you. yeah yeah thank but talking I, about uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sorry go ahead yeah. sorry right no no please go ahead no uh, so with the, if i take if i uh, take this course so on on 10 how, how much uh, uh, myself uh, i can crack the interviews on this so how much you going to cover on the you know the data side to crack the interviews this is for everyone guys this is a very valid question okay if you just want to rely on my course okay and you don't want to put any additional effort you better don't join this course okay so uh, i i'm going to be brutally honest okay because effort from your side is also needed right if you are a fresher my course will be more than enough more than enough mark my words okay for a mid level engineer when i say mid level engineer my definition of mid level engineer is 3 to 5 years okay up to 2 years my course is more than enough 3 to 5 years my course would be 50 to 60% enough or i would say maybe 70% sometimes okay but if you are going to market your profile with 6 plus years of experience my course would fulfill only 50% of your purpose okay come on guys i have 11 years of experience i cannot you know cover what i have learned in 11 years in just 2 months okay so i am delivering what best i can do but i'll be guiding you in every step like what i have covered what else is left learning what else would help you in cracking your interviews so all that additional effort you'll have to put in it's a journey it's not that your miracles would happen in 2 months you know right after completing this course you will end up getting a job and start writing five star code no that won't happen okay but uh, if you still think why i'll have to put a lot of effort into data engineering i don't have to tell you you can open uh, job portals and see the salary ranges and uh, the number of requirements you currently have for data engineer role okay because you join any course people would be saying you know we have so much demand and uh, you know learning this thing will let you earn more than 30 40% of what other uh, uh, areas are earning right so i don't want to talk about that i would let you go and uh, do the research by yourself maybe some of you must have already done that that could be the reason for choosing this course too attending this demo too okay but i'll let you go ahead and do that okay i hope i answered your question buddy
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Vish. Yeah, uh, so definitely we'll keep the affairs. I, I yeah, <laughs> with these two months of training, um, yeah, um, we're not yeah. expecting like you know you get your eleven years of experience, but I understand what you said. Yeah, we need to keep yeah. our hard work and the same actually. Thank you, Vish. No worries. Okay. Any other questions, guys? Uh, hello, Suresh. I just have a question. Correct me if I'm wrong. So yeah, go ahead, when, he, when he spoke to a couple of uh, uh, people who are right now working as data engineers, what they has to say is like uh, you can't directly get a data engineer role. Like as you mentioned in TCS, Infosys, kind of big companies, initially they expect you to have uh, a couple of uh, years. Work, like work experience as data analyst before they give you a responsibility or a role as data engineer for someone uh, who doesn't have an uh, technical experience like from a non technical experience will they able, will they be able to cope up after this course like uh, putting in all the extra effort and stuff uh, will they will their profile be eligible for the you know like consideration yeah firstly i'll i'll tell you what monish mm -hmm. okay so uh, when you talk to people right they only share their experiences what they have gone through okay it's not generic day one of my career i was writing map reduce code in tcs okay so i joined as a fresher in tcs from college okay and uh, you know back then it was all java so i did really well in java in my training and i got an opportunity to work in big data even without having any data background just because i know java they believed me that i'll be capable enough to write map reduce applications okay. okay so it's not correct even tcs infosys accenture you know they started something called as digital hiring these days i don't know uh, how many of you know about this where they offer higher packages to freshers okay so for example the regular hiring if they are offering 3.5 lakh in india for digital hires they are offering close to 7.5 to 8.5 case on case basis yeah. okay so they don't hire people with uh, i mean they they won't they won't hire people paying 7.5 lakh to do a data analyst job mm -hmm. makes sense right okay so they are training them in the colleges itself okay in four to itself they are training uh, these folks and uh, you know pushing them into projects directly uh, once they have joined the organization maybe they'll try to give the project exposure for a month or so and then uh, they are putting them into projects uh, this is happening currently and uh, if you are from a non technical background when you say non technical background uh, you know i would say i i don't want to call it as non technical background but i would say it's a different background maybe you are coming in from an uh, administration side or maybe you are coming from a qa side okay uh, maybe finding the opportunity in the same organization might be a little difficult again they don't expect you to work as a data analyst uh, there are two ways of building data solutions guys one way of uh, looking at is looking at it is uh, knowing what a join is what a union operation is what pi spark is all these things and uh, the second way is understanding where to apply these things we know what a join is but when do we have to apply a join right so there are two ways of looking at it so most of the time in my course i try to uh, you know merge these two parameters because it's not just about teaching you what is what it's about teaching you where to apply these uh, uh, topics or where to apply these learnings whatever uh, you learn what are the concepts you learn okay so with proper efforts yes i believe you will be able to crack an interview and also right cracking interview differs from one interview experience to another interview experience requirement changes organization changes okay so uh, generally you know i'm talking about the successful students in my career my students right so uh, they are all having one common attribute persistency okay so let's say you have completed this course and maybe you have spent 3 4 months 
in going through all the concepts and learning all the additional topics i have told you and started uh, giving interviews you will not get success in first few interviews or maybe first 10 or first 20 never know it might go up to 30 okay but uh, what i keep telling my students is you know boss you failed in 10 interviews for 11th interview you have a question bank of 10 interviews you see what yeah. i'm saying so when you're not able to crack an interview i want you to come back go to your basics and then see what questions they have asked and uh, try to do a 360 degree research on each of these questions which you are not able to answer you will end up finding a lot of dependent topics in that process and if you can do that for 20 30 interviews imagine your confidence for 31st interview but the first question you'll have to ask yourself is am i patient enough to attend 30 interviews 30 is just a number it can be five interviews or it can be your second interview too never know this is out of my experience guys again if you go to somebody else they might have a different perception make sense thank you ji. that that answers my question yeah <clears throat> thank you no worries baskar are we going to do any kind of project implementation let me tell you project implementation is a myth especially in training people talk about a lot of real time project stuff right no okay so we are going to build solutions answer is yes okay so for example i want to teach you uh, write mode in PySpark. There are multiple modes like overwrite, append, and then merge. Okay, I'll not just teach you what overwrite is doing, what append is doing, or what merge is doing. Instead, I'll tell you what an SCD type 1 is, SCD type 2 is, and how you can implement SCD type 1 and type 2 using append and merge modes respectively. Okay, so solution based teaching and use case based teaching will be there, but uh, don't expect any real time projects. I don't have GBs of data to teach you anything real time and also i'm i'm not rich enough to spend so much of money dealing with gbs or uh, tbs of data okay and uh, you know obviously there are a lot of cost parameters as well even you will end up paying more prices more cost if i have to deal with gbs of data okay so project solutions yes but i don't want to add the real time word there but I'll give you insights on how the real-time project works. I'll be talking about my projects. Hope that answers your question. Baskar. Okay. Any other questions, guys? Cool. So uh, one request from my side before you leave, uh, just uh, you can probably type a comment on uh, how do you feel about you know today's interaction. Just a kind of feedback, guys. If you are able to get some insights on what is what, what you are going to learn, you know, just some feedback. Uh, gee, sorry to interrupt. Uh, uh, I just have a question. Yeah, please go ahead. So, so I was uh, watching the previous uh, batches demo class recording, and they have mentioned uh, them uh, about recommending some uh, certification so that you know the profile will be built before we actually give our interviews. So, like, DP two zero three. Yeah, I actually don't remember the code, but uh, that's okay. I remember recalling it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, uh, what was your question? So, uh, will you also do that uh, for us, like to recommend the certifications based on the beginner or else uh, the kind of requirement? I usually recommend certifications for uh, folks in US because for them, certificate matters a lot. Okay. 
because what I believe is certifications doesn't have any value these days. At least uh, my perception, not just my perception, but in India, we don't care whether you had a certification or not. Because these days, I, I, I'll give you an example. I have two openings in my current organization and I have rejected more than 45 profiles. And trust me, out of those 45 profiles, 42 profiles are uh, certified profiles. The reason being, you want to get certified, I'll give you a way where you can certified, get certified tomorrow. If you have good memory, you don't even have to learn anything. All you just need to do is spend maybe 1500 INR and you will be getting certified tomorrow itself. Okay. But yeah. since certification is fancy to add it in our LinkedIn, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe to add it to our profile. I'll be telling you how to crack it. But yes, if you are certified, if you, if you really want certification, you know, you can do it tomorrow itself. Okay. Okay. But my recommendation, learning and doing it will give you more satisfaction. Okay. But I'll, I'll guide you like what is needed, you know, what certification you'll have to take for you to uh, showcase your uh, skills. Sure. sure. Thank okay. You. Thank you. No worries. I'm from .NET background. What I have to learn to start this course, maybe since you are coming from a programming background for you, learning Python won't be a difficult to maybe just a simple brush up should do. Do we can we can do data engineering fundamentals in Microsoft that could help us for data analyst. Uh, Darini, firstly, I would recommend you to understand uh, the roles and responsibilities of a data analyst. So usually uh, doing data engineering fundamentals won't make you a data analyst. Okay, so data analyst responsibilities are uh, bigger. Okay, so usually they work in both reporting and functional side of any organization. Do we have recordings of uh, previous sessions? When you say previous sessions, my previous batches. If your answer is yes, we do have, but uh, another answer will not be sharing them with uh, any other batches because every batch recordings are completely exclusive for those batches only. Okay. Uh, once we start our batch, you know, we will record everyday sessions and upload them to Google Drive from where you can access. Okay. And uh, maybe if you are uh, in a doubt, like how the course would be uh, and other things, uh, you guys are not paying anything on the day one. Okay. You'll be attending few sessions and then if you really like the course, only then you'll pay. Okay. But previous batches recordings will not be provided okay i will be wrapping up in next uh, five minutes guys i'll still stay if you have any questions okay uh, but i want to hear from you too please leave a note on how you felt about today's session Yes, Monish. Okay, thank you. In fact, when I'm teaching, I would assume you don't even have that. So it will be a little boring for the folks who already knew it in the first few sessions, but that's okay. Okay. Thank you all. Enjoy your weekend. Happy learning.